Hey there PhD friend, in today's video I'm going to be sharing a way that I found that was very very effective when it came to reading research papers during my PhD and I think it's going to be helpful for you as well. So you're welcome to this channel, I'm Dr. Gertrude Nantra and on this channel I make videos about slaying grad school and navigating careers after the fact. If any of that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Now the way most research papers go, usually you have have an abstract you have an introduction then they usually jump into the materials and methods then the results and then the discussion this is the general format for most research papers okay now when you're reading a research paper it's important to realize that you do not necessarily have to read them in that order I got in this trap quite a bit during my early days as a PhD student until much later okay and so here's a trick that i found that was very helpful the first thing i would do was to read the abstract yes the abstract usually is first and i would read that first and the reason i read that first is because the abstract is usually a summary a general overview of the entire paper including the overall result that the paper achieved and so that could be the summary that you put in your filing system that could be the thing that helps you remember the paper that in this paper this was the question that they had this was how they solved it and these were the results that they got and so usually this is addressed in the abstract so reading that abstract is really really helpful to give you a general overview of the paper and in fact there are times when you can read the abstract and you may not need to read the rest of the paper really um, except for maybe you may want to go in and check some details right so reading the abstract is usually the first thing that I would do then secondly I'd read the introduction now so far we're going order right I'd read the introduction and the reason I'd read in the introduction is because the introduction really gives you the reasons why this paper was written so the way research goes as you, most of you know there's usually a gap in knowledge right there's there have been all these findings but usually the paper is addressing something that hasn't been addressed yet or may have been addressed but there were still questions right so that gap in knowledge is what is being investigated in the paper so you really want to know what the gap in knowledge is and I also find that introductions are really helpful for giving you background knowledge on certain subjects that you otherwise would not have then I usually will skip over materials and methods and results and jump straight to the discussion. The reason why I jump straight to the discussion is because in the discussion, usually this is where they're summarizing the results. <laughs> That's why you can skip the results at this point. Okay, they summarize the results and in the discussion, the authors will discuss what they think the results mean, right? What What's the implication of the results, right? So I like to go into the discussion and then see what they've written. So they'll tell you, okay, we got this result, okay? So now you know the result, <laughs> okay? You didn't need to read the results. But then this is the implication. And, and these are also notes you can go ahead and take in your notebook. So then after I would read the discussion, it would that would be when I would read the results. I still haven't read materials and methods yet. I would go back and read the results because at that point I would want to see the data, the actual data, how they represented the data, and if I'm convinced if the data matches with the results they're telling me that they got. And so usually you'll be able to tell from the data, you'll be able to like judge yourself whether, okay, this is convincing enough. They use a reasonable N, right, of, of subjects or of experiments. Um, how do they calculate, you know, the p-value, all these things, right? You'd be able to look at the charts, the graphs, the data that they showed you and make those judgments. And the way that I tend to read results is I usually go to the figures and would look at the figure and read the figure legend. Because remember, I've already read the discussion and kind of had an idea of the results. So now all I'm doing is looking at the figures, reading the figure legends. And if there's something I really don't understand, then I would go and read the results section itself, the part of the results section that talks about that. Then if I really wanted to find out how something was done, I would then read the materials and methods. So you do not have to read a paper in the order it's written. 
I would usually read it this way because it made the most sense to me to do it this way so that I would not drive myself insane. And plus reading papers can be sort of boring. <laughs> so doing it this way made it less boring for me and helped me retain a lot of knowledge that I was able to use to write papers um, during my PhD program. Do you read papers a different way? Let me know in the comments below how you tend to read your research papers.